We just launched 22 startups in 30 days flat, only using AI. And today I'll reveal exactly how we did it. I'll be talking about the tools that we used, the startups that we built, and a step-by-step -step process that you can follow to launch your own from scratch. This is Alicia, an accountant from Florida, who before meeting us was spending all of her time binge watching YouTube videos and starting projects, but never really finishing because a lack of focus and a lack of understanding the process. And in 30 days, she built not one, but several apps. So I said 22, but we actually built more than that. But at this point, you're probably wondering what she actually built. Darlene Dreams makes every bedtime story personal. You log in, you put your child's name, what they're interested in, and an auto-generated story is personalized for them based upon their theme. But because I know your next question is, how did she actually build it? Well, that's pretty simple. Vibe coding. Vibe coding, what does that mean? Am I, are we vibing? What's happening? Vibe coding is a term that's used to basically build products on the fly without having any technical skills. And that's because we can leverage tools that are AI coding platforms. More specifically, Lovable and Supabase, two of my favorite AI coding platforms. Now, on top of that, she used 11 labs, which allows you to basically create voices and use them within your apps, as well as two APIs to add some AI inside of it. Claude being the primary LLM. And then we had OpenAI, which was the fallback LLM. But the hilarious thing about Alicia and her story is that as she learned the skills to basically build things and to automate systems, she was able to start exchanging services with people. And so here are a couple of examples of the crazy things that she did. I've ended up trading and automation for a new water purification system, new hair extensions, the girl that does my nails, she wanted a little thing. And you're probably laughing. I was definitely dying when I heard these stories, but I also encouraged her to start taking on clients for money because money can pay for things too. But when I asked her what she had taken away from the experience, this is what she said. I'm a little bit more energized, just about tools in general and trying out new things. And um, I'm seeing a lot more ways where we can streamline processes. It's open my eyes to ways where I can still get the job done and focus all my time and energy on the important aspects of my life, either professionally or personally. And she's now just launched this app, so you can check it out in the description if you'd like. But before moving on to the next one, let me ask you a question. Have you ever sent a text message to someone you were potentially romantically interested in, and then you went back and forth and suddenly the conversation completely stops? And then you really start wondering like, what did I do wrong? Was it me? Was it her? And you start looking at that conversation and then you start completely overthinking it. Well, that's exactly why Bo over here built a platform called Vibe check it's a platform that allows you to upload a screenshot and then it's going to basically give you a vibe check it's going to tell you and analyze the conversation and give you kind of an answer or some feedback on how this feels but not just that it also over time as you feed it more screenshots of that conversation it can tell you the health of that relationship so if one of your relationships starts becoming a bit toxic well vibe check it's going to tell you about it now before joining us this is how he felt i was more just like only thinking about stuff and like not knowing exactly you know like what route i want to take and how to go about um like bringing it to life, basically. Now the tool set he used was exactly the same one that we used with Alicia. Basically, lovable to build the front end, the back end, or the database, and then all of the edge functions were done with Supabase. Same thing with the storage, and then he used an LLM to be able to vibe check. And you'll actually notice that this is a very powerful tool set, especially for non-technical entrepreneurs. So remember, if you're not sure about the status of your relationships, there's only one way to find out how well they're going. Vibe check it. Now this next founder had a recurring dream and a fixation on his own death because of a family member having a similar issue. But during an ayahuasca trip, or ceremony, he had a realization that led him to this startup idea. Having a young daughter, he asked himself what he would actually be leaving behind if he died tomorrow. And that, my friends, was the birth of a company called Transcender. I built a platform called Transcender.io that allows people to send messages to other people after uh, they're gone and examples might be death, medical coma or incarceration. Now, Kwa was actually very technical when he walked into our 30 day AI coding bootcamp, but he really had a hard time seeing the bigger picture of how to go from zero to one. But when he started leveraging these AI coding platforms, he realized that his ideas could also become a reality and very quickly. Now, before joining the bootcamp, this is how he described his journey. I think I'm a pretty technical guy, even though I haven't been in tech for a couple of years. And then of course, uh, since I had left tech, I wasn't coding at all. 
Um, and so my those skills further perished. However, by the end of the program, this is what he was saying. All the things in my imagination that I never thought I was going to be able to uh, to create myself, I can now bring into fruition. My trajectory of life has just completely changed. And today he's built more than one app and he actually has paying customers for them. And when asked what advice he would give to people starting off on their startup journey, this is what he said. This is possible. It is real. Just follow it. And it's not as hard as you think it is. I mean, it's still a road and you still have to put in the work. Um, but at the same time, like it, it, it's not some sort of like pie in the sky. It is obtainable. And my friends, if you have an idea for an app, but you don't know how to code and you're kind of terrified about all this technical stuff, then I highly recommend that you check out our AI coding bootcamp because we're pretty much going to teach you the framework that you can use to launch not just this idea that you currently have, but every idea that you have moving forward, meaning that with more shots on goal, you have a much higher likelihood of crushing it on one of them. And guess what? You only have to be right once. And this is a bootcamp that works for people who are not technical at all, but also for people who are very technical and really don't know how to go from zero to one. Now, it's an application-based program, so feel free to check it out and apply if you think it's a good fit. And if you're accepting the program, you're gonna see a lot more of this face for 30 days. So careful what you wish for. Back to the video. Now at this point, you're probably wondering what the actual process is. What methodology are we using to be able to launch these startups? Well, there are a couple of steps that when you do in the right order is going to increase dramatically your chances of not only building a product, but building a product that people are actually excited and willing to pay for. Step one is usually customer discovery and development. We have lots of assumptions, but our customer holds the truth. So we wanna figure out a couple of important things. Who is the ideal customer to go after? and what is the specific problem that we are solving for. Now, at this point, you don't have to be right about these. You just need to write down these assumptions so that we can then test them. And I know that a lot of you already think you know who the customer is, the problem that they have, and more specifically, the idea that you have to solve that problem. Now, the next step, and let's call it step two, is to figure out what is the actual outcome that someone is looking for. And I'm not talking about features here. I'm talking about the actual transformation, the outcome someone is looking for. Airbnb, rent a house. Uber, rent a cab. Twitch, watch other people play playing video games. Anyway, the point is that there's an outcome people actually want. And although you might not want to watch Christian play Call of Duty for four hours, what customers are looking to buy is a specific outcome. And the quicker we're able to identify what that outcome is, the quicker we're able to scope our project. And scoping is probably the most important part because we need to build a minimum viable product. A product, with maybe one or two features that basically solves the problem to the best of our capability. And here's where it gets complicated. AI is amazing, but as soon as you let AI take the reins of things, it's gonna get incredibly ambitious, meaning that it wants to build out a thousand features, but guess what? For all of those beautiful front end features or the things that you see on screen, you actually need to build them in the back. So reducing the scope of your app allows you to see whether or not you are building something that people actually want and are willing to pay for. And a big mistake people make here is to build something and keep adding features because they think that's gonna help the fact that they're not solving the right problem or that people aren't willing to pay for it. And of course, I know most of you only care just about the building part. So let's jump straight into that. And that's step three. Now, when we bring people into step three, we need them to to understand what they're actually doing. You don't need to learn how to code, but we need to teach you some core principles and how these tools connect to each other and how you can actually bring to life the project or the minimum viable product that you had in mind. And at step three is exactly the place where Dan over here came to us. You see, he had already been working for a really long time and had deep knowledge in political campaigns. And he had firsthand experienced this problem in the market. And that, my friends, is when he decided to build Voter Contact Dashboard. It helps political campaigns understand their voter contact metrics. That's that SMS, the phone calls, and the canvassing. There's a whole bunch of valuable data in there, and campaigns really struggle to understand it, analyze it, and how that would, you know, go ahead and implement and change the plan along the way. And although at the beginning, he was a little bit skittish, having spent a lot of money on other programs, but by the end of the 30 days, my friends, this is what he had to say. I can take things I learned from this boot camp. I can build things for myself, and I can definitely build things that I could eventually monetize with just a little bit of help. In fact, he also wrote a full blog article about his experience learning how to code with AI. And I'll put that below in the description along with the link to his startup. And now my friends, it is time to talk about Top Dog. And I'm not talking about the guy who lives around my block and continuously bullies me. I'm talking about the startup that William over here just built. I wanted to create an app that would gamify the daily tasks that the employees need to complete, allowing me to motivate them and reward them on a weekly basis 
uh, for a job well done. And I call it a startup, but it's a bit more of a management system that he's looking to rent out to other people. You see, William has a dog hotel that he runs and he has lots of employees, but honestly, it's very hard to manage those employees and it's really even more difficult to get them to be excited about their jobs sometimes. And so prior to meeting us, a lot of this happened on a board manually, day in, day out. And it was very difficult to keep retention and it was even more difficult to keep that younger generation excited at all or maybe even working at all. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, he was able to automate the system leveraging software that he built for himself throughout our bootcamp. After the bootcamp is like, oh, wow, how big the universe of AI is and its capabilities and how with even just a little bit of knowledge, I can create efficiencies in my business that I never knew the potential existed. And so today his dog hotel is more streamlined than McDonald's. Wait, I don't mean like dogs in food or that's a terrible example. But the point is, if you have a dog hotel, you probably want to check out this software in the description. Okay, okay, let's talk about the next step. Step four, you want to go out there and start getting paid customers. So how can you do that leveraging AI? Well, there are a number of different channels that you can use to get customers or to get attention that then converts into customers. But because we need to start with channels that give us a lot of feedback on our product to know if we're even on the right track, we don't really have the luxury of time. So there are certain strategies which will not work. SEO, you can set up today, it's awesome. It will definitely work, but it'll take six months to kick in. Content marketing, again, you can start today and you'll start seeing results in a couple months. Now paid ads can be a pretty good option, but since you don't really have product market fit at this point, it's gonna be very expensive. So it's great to test, but not necessarily to get sales at scale. And that leaves us the last one, which is the golden nugget. It is the most popular way to get customers in early stage startups, and that has been for the past three decades. That's right, I'm talking about cold outbound outreach. And there are three main steps you wanna do. Number one, build a list. You can go on Sales Navigator on LinkedIn and build a list of your ideal customer profiles by just changing a couple of filters. You can also download a list from a platform like Apollo or Zoom Info. And once you have a list of those ideal customer profiles, we wanna do a couple of things. We first of all want to enrich our list to know if these are the right people, right? If they're the right targets that we're going after, meaning that we need to find things like their email address, we need to find out their phone number, all the information on their LinkedIn profile, which will then allow us to do two main things. The first one is basically to qualify those against the actual ideal customer profiles that we're going after. And you can use an easy to use tool called Outbond to be able to enrich all of those leads. You just upload the list and then basically you'll be able to enrich that list and filter out that list so that you're only targeting the people that you really wanna go after. Do additional research about those people and then use all of that information to create highly personalized messaging that you can then send out on LinkedIn and via email to dramatically improve your chances of getting replies. You see, the days of email blasts where one size fits all just doesn't work anymore. No, my friends, we've now entered the generation of vibe marketing. Oh God, vibing again, really? That's that's right, it's the same concept. Basically, as non-technical people, we can leverage these very powerful tools to be able to find and close 10x more customers leveraging the power of AI. And Outbond is a platform that does just that. Even better, you can connect that to a sequencer to be able to send out the messages on autopilot. So using platforms like HeyReach, which would be great for LinkedIn, or Instantly, which is great for email. But Christian, what about cybersecurity? I'm glad you asked. This, my friends, is Vikas a cybersecurity expert with decades of experience in the field. And he as well was a part of the program. You see, he realized that it was a real problem in the market. And he's another great example of a founder with lots of experience in a field who's lacking the capability to monetize his insights. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to explain what I knew to product people or engineers. And ultimately then they couldn't develop what I wanted. I, I did try and learn to code, attended boot camps, lots of deleted projects, lots of like banging my head against the brick wall. But this my friends has now changed. After just 30 days, he was also able to build his startup. What does it do? Let him tell it. Post GRC accelerates sales velocity for B2B companies by identifying and automating enterprise compliance requirements. So what was his inspiration to build this platform? I noticed that lots of organizations were getting lots of requirements and they just didn't know how to manage it. With the deals stalling, 
companies would either lose a lot of time or lose a lot of money. And when it comes to cybersecurity, a lot of it has to do with how you actually set up your database. And by building your platform on Supabase, you already increase dramatically the chances that they're already taking into consideration the cybersecurity needs that you have and implementing them on the back end. Things like row level security, which frankly, you don't really need to know exactly what it means, but Supabase automatically does that for you. But Christian, I wanna go out there and raise some money. Well, that's actually the final step that we taught people throughout this cohort. Because if there's one thing I know from having run a startup accelerator program before I built We Are No Code is that founders are really bad at being concise about what they actually are building. And that's why from the beginning, we get them to practice their one-liners, which improve over the 30 days. And then at the end, we taught them how to pitch their startups and the importance of that if you're looking to raise funding. And those, my friends, were just a couple of the 22 startups that we launched in 30 days. And if you like this video, but you wanna watch me build an app from scratch, step-by-step, -step, leveraging the tools we just talked about, then check out this video, my friends. And of course, if you like this video and you wanna see more, then subscribe to the channel. And until next time, my friends, let's go.